family and their dear family has relatives and relatives and cousins and uncles and aunts and grandfathers and grandmothers. So we try to include everybody, sisters, brothers, moms, dads. Anyhow, I won't take much more time other than to say it's a personal pleasure because, you know, there are people in, in, in the music industry that are teachers without being teachers. This gentleman is an example because a, as, um, as a student of this music that is loved because of the, the, the emotion and the soul that it has, you know, we're inspired by our greats. And one of our greats is sitting next to us. Sitting, sitting next to me, I should say. Anyhow, without further ado, it's it's a great pleasure, personally, and also I know for every board member to uh, honor a legend of Latin jazz this year and to share this journey with you all. Thank you all for being here with us, moderating and presiding, and also helping along with it is his brother in arms, Francisco Torres, and presiding and interviewing Chris Hart from Limo. Ocho Sanchez. Here we go. Yeah, it's gonna be funny. <laughs> <laughs> we got jokes. <laughs> we, we got a we got a comedy team happening here. <laughs> Chris and Poncho, you got to check us out tonight. <laughs> two, uh, two drink minimum. It says, just don't eat the veil. <laughs> you guys are supposed to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, my name is Chris Hart, and um, I am the director of artists and public relations worldwide for Remo Incorporated. And um, for those who might not know um, about Remo, uh, we're the largest manufacturer of drum heads in the world. We also make uh, world percussion and drums and all that other good stuff. And um, I am proud and I am honored um, to have not only a Grammy Award winning Congaro percussionist, not only a, a Remo Signature Series artist, but uh, a true friend in Pancho Sanchez. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so um, this is from Ruben, what Ruben explained to me, this is a conversation. And, and uh, some might know Pancho's uh, um, flight here, as um, far as uh, his musical career or whatever, and, and some might not. So for those who know, Bear with us, but for those who might not know, you're gonna learn a lot. Poncha was born October 30th, 1951, in Laredo, Texas. Um, he he will expound on this, but he moved to a city called Norwalk, California. And that's a for, for those who might know not know Norwalk is a suburb of Los Angeles. Okay. Um, Pancho is the youngest of 11 children, okay? And, uh, and for him to be sitting here right here is a, you know, that's a, that's a blessing in itself. Um, Pancho's a self-taught musician. He, you know, he uh, learned flute and drums and timbales at an early age, but his first instrument was a guitar. That's right. Didn't think I knew that. Yeah, I know people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, also, there's a, um, when Pancho was young, um, he also, he auditioned for an uh, R&B group called the Halos. Yes. More like the Devils, but they were called the Halos. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at this point, is when he discovered that he could sing. You didn't discover that beforehand? No. <laughs> I just, it was, uh, actually, I went to join that band as a guitar player. I wanted to be the guitar player in that band. But see, I, I had moved back to Laredo, Texas. This is when I was in junior high school. I moved back to Laredo 
and I was practicing on this guitar, and my friends that I left, we all learned and play at the same time. When I left, I, I practiced those three songs over and over. You dig for a, a year, and then I moved back to Norwalk a year later, and those two other guys I was learning to play the guitar with were a, a guy by the name of Benny Rodriguez, who lived across the street from me, was teaching us all how to play. He learned the guitar. He was in the rhythm and blues band. We were just kids learning to play, right? Right. When I came back, Benny had uh, kept teaching those guys every day, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have no teacher on the radio. I just kept practicing those three songs real good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so when I came back, I thought, wait, did I show these guys how, how good I know those three songs, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I walked in the door, and they had a band, and the amplifiers, and electric guitars, and I'm like this, you know? I couldn't believe that they even had a band. The same guys I was learning with, they already had a little, this band called the Halos, you know? And oh. I, I just couldn't believe it. But, so I kind of hid my guitar, you know? Like, because they were sounding a lot better than me already, you know, on the guitar. Right. And then they said, you know, Poncho, what we need is a singer in this band. We don't need a guitar player. They had three guitar players in the band. <laughs> and I said, well, it kind of leaves me out. I'm, I'm a guitar player, you know what I mean? They said, can you sing? I said, well, I sing to myself sometimes, you know? <laughs> and then, um, I was a, a little thin kid, I was about that thin, you know, <laughs> a little skinny kid. And I have six sisters and four brothers, older, all older than me, and my sisters were really good dancers, and they knew all the latest dances on TV, Latin and soul music, yeah. So they, they, they had it down real good, you know? And I learned from them watching my sisters. I used to dance with my sisters at home. So, I like James Brown, and I still do. <laughs> so I, I said, you guys know this James Brown song? And man, I got the microphone and started doing the James Brown and throwing the mic. I learned a lot of stuff by watching them, you know? And I just did my thing. And after the song was over, they told me, man, you sing great, you know? And I said, I do. <laughs> and he said, you're the singer of the band. And in those days, they gave me a stack of 45s records. And 40, I remember those. Yeah, 45 records. They gave me a stack and said, we, we're doing a wedding this weekend. Learn all those songs. <laughs> 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 and, and that was it. That's how I learned to sing, right but, on the spot. But, okay, so even with that, uh, Pancho, were you in junior high school or high school? Uh, was in junior high school right at that time, about 7th or 8th grade, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so how long were you in the, the Halo? Uh, I was in that band for, I think, about, I don't know, about three or four years at the moment, maybe three years, and then we all kind of split and made other bands, and then by then, after that, I, I, I was starting to play drums. Well, I was playing the trap set, and I put together a little Latin jazz band when I was in ninth grade, a uh, little Latin jazz band I put together called the Midnight Set. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, and I put that right on the drum head, you know what I mean? Really? Didn't that say? You know? I had better been a Remo head. And, and tilt it up too when you do it too. <laughs> tilt that bass drum up like this. You dig? Oh my God. The old days we used to tilt that bass drum up like this a little bit, about you know, tilt right. it up like that. So it goes out like this. Yes, sir. I got it. Midnight said, yeah, it was a Remo head, yes, sir. Uh, okay. But, okay, so. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> So we, we're we're in the junior high school um, years, but then when you when you uh, reached high school, that's when you start pursuing or you heard someone play conga drums. Yeah, is that is that correct? Yeah, that's about right. Like, like I said, I played the trap set for a while and had a little small little Latin jazz band. I mean, in those days we were just kids. Uh, we had one sax player in the band, and we played you know songs from my father, uh, you know. Uh, girl from Ipanema, so we were a hot jazz jazz band, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. So you're learning, you know, that's how you learn, you know? But anyway, uh, uh, but I always liked the conga and the timbales. Didn't know how to play them, but I knew what they were by mostly by just looking in back of album covers. Gotcha. My brothers and sisters had all the Tito Puente records, Machito, Tito Rodriguez, Cal Jader, all the Cal Jader records. So I used to listen to them at home and, and look at the back of the the albums, you know, and read the back, and then I would see pictures of Mongo Santa Maria, Willie Bobo, and uh, all the greats, you know, uh, and I would see pictures of them like this, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how I learned, by looking at those pictures in the back of the album, you know, how he had his hand like this, or like that, or, you know, 
like this, you know, like that, and listening to the record, you know, I listen real carefully, you know, and then, and I got a, uh, actually I got, I bought one conga, and my father bought the other one, we got them in the pawn shop, you know. Right, right, right. They were brand new. And that's the way you used to do it back in the day. Yeah, yeah man. Pawn shop. Well, my, my, I was lucky because mine were brand new, but they, they were 67 bucks a piece. Brand new. Brand new. <laughs> they weren't very good is what I'm trying to say. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, you, you you do what you gotta do to make it work, you know what yes, I mean? Sir. Yes, sir. And and I, I didn't really know how to tune them yet, but luckily, thank God, I made the right choices because I got one and I tuned it up high, and I got the other one and I tuned it down a little low, you know what I mean? Yeah. After a while I learned, you know, now I, I tune my drums, I, I use three congas. Well, actually, uh, two tumblers and a conga, and I tune them E, G, C, like a C chord, you know? So the top drum is a C. E, G, C is what I use my tuning. And I learned that from the great Patato many years ago. Patato taught me how to tune my drums. So what I have learned, Chris, I have learned, I mean, not out of a book, not out of a video, not out of a whatever. I learned right from the masters themselves. Yes, sir. Tio Point taught me things, but the Patato taught me how to tune my drums. He even taught me how to wear my hat. <laughs> I ain't lying. I gotta tell you, let me tell you this story, man. Let me tell you this lie. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Here we go, man. We're that respectable people. That's right. I've been behaving. Let me tell you this quick story about uh, the great Patato Valdez. He's about that tall. He looked like a little mouse. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little short cat, man. A uh, uh, Cuban guy, Cubano, the Cuba, and grew up, of course, in New York City. And the great Carlos Patato Valdez, man, he was he was something else, man. Very melodic, great conga drummer. Anyway, we we did a concert over here at the Irvine Bowl, Calgiers band, and it was the Tito Puente band. Those two bands together, and Willie Bobo was our guest, man. That was great. Anyway. I thought to see me wear my, my Kango hat. I used to wear the Kangos a lot, you know what I mean? And he see me wearing my Kango, and, and, and mine was kind of flopping down on the sides, you did? Oh, you got a Kango, that's, and that's a nice one too. Yeah. Right? That's slick. Yeah. 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 I don't need it, I got boxes of them. Well, yeah. well, well, before you go on, just to let you know, Ruben, he's the first person that got a Kango endorsement. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, <laughs> you know what, Kango used to send me boxes of every color they had, about four or five of each color. So they sent me about 35 hats every five months. So I had to get a little dirty. Ah, give me a fresh one. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. How'd I look? Yeah. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, I went in a hat like that. And mine was flop, a little flopping on the side. You know, it ain't flopping too bad, but you look over. I'll, I'll teach you something in a minute. Yeah. Keep listening. Keep listening now. All right, I'm gonna check you later. So check this out, Patata said, Oye Poncho. Of course he spoke nothing but Spanish, and if he spoke English, man, you couldn't understand him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well anyway, Patata said, Oye Poncho, come back And I said, Poncho, come here, come over here. I said, yeah, man. He said, dame, dame tu cachucha, dame tu, give me your hat. I'm gonna talk in English. Give me your hat. Okay, I, you know, I said, Oye, man, why? You know, what, what's my hat for? And he goes, you need, you're not wearing it right, you know? And, and I said, what do you mean? And he goes, Look at mine. And his was nice and puffy around the side. It looked sharp. It looked, I said, yeah, man, yours does look better than mine's. Mine's. Anyway, <laughs> so check this out. So we were, we're, we're on a break at the Irvine Bowl over here down over there. And um, he says, uh, man, ven pa acá, Come over here, come over here. And he started walking towards the men's restroom. And I'm walking slowly behind him and going like, what? I don't quite get what's going on here, you know? And then he goes inside the men's restroom, Poncho, man, Poncho, come on, come here. I'm going, oh, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. And he goes in the men's restroom, you know? And I'm just kind of trembling behind. I said, well, I'm bigger. I know I can take this sucker. Yeah, yeah man, I'll, man, he, he might be quick, but I'll, I'm going to whoop him, you know? Anyway, so check this out. Potato's going in there. Bam, Poncho, man, come on, come on, get in here. And then, and then I went in the restroom. And then he goes inside the, the men's stall, and I said, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> he go in there, he went in there. Man, Pollo, man. And I'm going, oh, wait. Oye, patata, que pasa contigo? Oye, que pasa? What's wrong? Uh, hey, man, what's up with you, man? What are you doing, man? He go, Pollo, bang. And he, give me your hat, give me your hat. And he got my hat, and he 
took it out and he started stuffing toilet paper around his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he, he, I'm going to show you something in a minute. He started stuffing toilet paper around the sides like that, real nice, you know. And he pulled that toilet paper around there and then, and, then he, and, and I said, damn. I put it on and said, shit. I mean, shucks. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I looked at him and I said, man, yeah, I look pretty good. I said, Man, no wonder why he, no wonder why his looks nice all the time. <laughs> if you did, when you buy that hat, that paper comes in there. Not you. I used to get him just throw it away. No, man, you just put it to the side, man. Put it to the side, and it keeps the sides nice and puffy. You did. And after a while, I just start using paper towels and put it up in there. You know. After a while, man, that, man, my hat's look sharp, man. Yeah. But now I'm a, a, another kick. I wear a different kind of hat now. Yeah. What? But that's yeah. I, well, I got a few of them left. Oh. Okay. Yeah, don't look sad. Okay. All right, anyway, Patato showed me how to even, not only how to tune my drums, he showed me how to wear my hat, baby. Wow. Now I'm showing you. <laughs> now, you, you touched on a base that we, we, get, we definitely got to talk about, is um, get into your professional years. You know, you, you started off with Cal J. Mm. How in the world a young man from Norwalk, or Laredo, Texas, via Norwalk, right, right. get connected with a legendary microphone like Cal J. How did that come about? Man, God's been good to me, man. Oh, yeah, That's he's good sure. to everybody. Yeah, yeah baby. <laughs> hey, there you go, Chris, thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying. So check it out. What, the way that happened is I I was married, and my wife Stella's back there. Stella, raise your hand. There she is, <laughs> my wife Stella back there. That's my wife, Stella. We've been married only, only for 42 years. <laughs> Not that long. My man, Joey. <laughs> anyway, my wife, Stella, we had been married for a couple of years, and I was working in a foundry. I used to work in a foundry in Southgate. I used to work in a steel mill, a foundry, you man. You used to work in Southgate? Mm-hmm. Right off of Tweety Boulevard, baby. I know Tweety. Yeah. Or the chick or the street. <laughs> Well, that's, I know right in there. Yeah, I know it. Go ahead, go ahead. I was working in a foundry right there, off of the end of Tweety there. And um, and I worked in the foundry, and on the weekends I would play with a local band. I was in a pretty good band at that time called Sabor. It was a band called Sabor. They played every weekend at a wedding somewhere in Southern California. I mean, I ain't lying, they, these guys were booked. Because they did a cross between, at that time, Tower Power, uh, blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, Mongo Santa Maria's music. That's what they. That's the kind of band it was, and and oldies doo So we did all that, all that at a wedding. You got to do all that stuff, right? Well, I was in that band for about three or four years, and I was playing all around town with that band. And I had learned to play congas really good by then. Okay, on, on my own. And a guy, we were playing a local club in uh, Pico Rivera, California. It was a little Hispanic. Uh, hangout club. It was called the uh, Latin American Press Club on Washington Boulevard. Anyway, we played in that place on the weekends, and it was predominantly Latinos in there. I would say 90% Latino people would go in there, and you know, we played Latin music and uh, uh, pop music and rock music or whatever. Anyway, uh, one night we were up there playing, and, and the guy walked in with a hat, and he had a little feather sticking out of his hat, and he was a white guy. Excuse me, but it, I mean, what I'm trying to say is he stuck out like a sore thumb, you know what I'm saying, like in this club, right? right, right. And, and I'm playing, I see this guy walking, he goes to the bar. No big deal, it's cool, we're playing, everything's, everything's cool. Took a break, and I went over to the bar to get me a beer or something, you know, on my break. And I walked over there, this gentleman, his name was named Ernie Stills. Ernie, and this gentleman said, uh, hey man, you sound really good on Coleman's, I said, thank you, you know. And he goes, can I buy you a drink? I said, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> so he got me a drink. And he says, you know, I'm a personal friend of Cal Jader's. And I said, hmm. I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> and I said, hmm, all right. And uh, hey, man, thank you for the drink, man. And I said, and don't forget to tell your friend, Cal Jader, about me. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I am. I'm going to tell him about you. I am going to tell him about you. I said, yeah, all right. And I walked back on the stage. and. and uh, the Bonda brothers, Ramon and Tony Bonda, were both in that band that I was in. Uh, they were just kids. Well, we were all kids, but I'm a, I'm a couple years older than them. <coughs> but anyway, uh, 
I'm way older than you. Yeah, 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 way older than this baby boy. So check it out. Yeah, this guy wasn't even born yet, man. <laughs> anyway, so check this out right quick. So I get back on the stage and I told him, Moan and Tony, I said, you see that cat over there? The guy with it? And they go, oh, the guy with the hat? The white guy? Yeah, I seen him when he walked in. You know, they, they, you know, right, right. I seen him when he walked in. What about him? I said, he says he's a friend of Cal Jaders. And the guy, they, they start going, yeah, right, shit. <laughs> right, right, right. And the guy jiving. Man, that guy shouldn't be walking here jiving like that. Right, you're, right. you're gonna get in trouble. You know? here. Yeah, baby, to be careful now when you talk about it. <laughs> you know what they said? Yeah, that guy's lying, man. What a fool, you know? Two weeks later, Cal Jay was playing a concert by the sea in Redondo Beach, downstairs, Hot and Rumsey's. Oh, yeah. I used to go there all the time, see Mongo, Willie, everybody. Mm -hmm. Went down, so I'm starting to, we were starting to go downstairs, and man, I put the brakes on. I, I seen that guy talking to Cal Jay at the box office down at the end of the stairs. I went, oh my God, I told my wife, Stella, remember that guy that was lying? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's him, that's that guy that we seen at the club, man. He, he, and then right about then he pointed at me and said, Cal, that's him, on your side. Man, I like, and, and I, that's I, how it happened. Yeah, and then he said, Cal, there's Poncho, this Cal. And then Cal said, it surprised me. Cal Jeter told me, you know, Poncho, every time I come to Los Angeles, a lot of people tell me about you, that you play good congas. And I went, now I got, now you're getting me real scared. Yeah, right, right, right. And he said, would you like to sit in? Can you imagine that? And I said, when? And he right. said, tonight? Wow. And I said, wow. Uh, yeah, all right, you know. And he went off inside and we paid our way in. Right, right. We sat down like regular folks, you know, and I'm said, and my wife says, is he really gonna call me up there? <laughs> I said, well, that's what he said. That, you never know. Hey, you know, check this out, man. They were playing, Michael Smith was a comic drummer in his band at that time. Michael already pa he passed away. He was originally from Chicago. Anyway, Michael was playing congas. I used to see him play all the time. And I, Cal, Cal, Cal Jeter called me right out of the audience and said, there's a young conga drummer from Los Angeles, we're gonna have him sit in with us tonight. I went out up there and, and Cal, I played a song and he gave me a solo and I got a standing ovation. Wow. And then the, the other part, I thought, okay, I'm done. I could live the rest of my life now. You're good to go. Yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> and I'm getting off stage. Sat me back and I goes, stay with us the rest of the set. <laughs> And I look at the combo player at the bar, I'm like, hmm. And he, and he said, the next song we're going to do, you're not going to know it because I haven't recorded it yet. And I said, he goes, so when there's some breaks come up, just lay out and then jump back in. I said, all right. And he started playing, it was a, I think it was a version of Manteca. And I had heard him, I seen him play that song six months before. Really? Yeah. And so he started playing it and the breaks came up and I played it. And he went like, he couldn't believe it. And he told me after the song was over, how did you know them breaks? That's not, I haven't recorded that song yet. I go, I was here six months ago when you played it. And he goes, and you learned it just by watching the yeah. He goes, man, you are good. <laughs> now, now, how old were you at that time? Was, if you can uh, remember. I, 20, I was 24 years old, 23 or 24, yeah. Just a kid, man. Wow. You know what I do? But I was a big fan of Cal Jairus. I knew everything about it, all his songs, Mongo, Santa Maria, Tipo Puente. I knew every song inside and out. Now, how long did you stay with him? I was with, I was with Cal Jairus for seven and a half years, and I was with him when he died of a heart attack in the Philippines. We were in Manila, and I, I was with him when he died. I seen him die. Now, okay, now this is, a, this is almost a segue to what I'm about to get into. I know because I know people, remember, mm -hmm. remember I told you I know people? Yeah, yeah. So, somebody told me <laughs> that um, before Cal died, um, the founder of uh, the founder of Concord Records, um, oh, Carl yeah. Jefferson, um, yeah. he recommended, before Cal passed away, he recommended yeah. you yeah, yeah. To be signed with Concord Piante yeah, Records. Mm, you've been doing your homework, Jim. Hey, wait, hey, hey, I'm Chris Hart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, no wonder why. Hey, no wonder why. No wonder why. But, but, that, but that is a true story. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, uh, Carl, Carl Jefferson was the founder of Concord Records, and uh, he, Cal Jeter, signed with him, and they made the branch of Concord Picante 
from Concord Jazz Records, they made the branch for Cal Jader. And, and then Cal signed, the very first person Cal Jader signed on that Concord Peak Content record label was um, Tanya Maria. Tanya Maria. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. She did two records with Picante, Salsa Picante, uh, Concord Picante. I'm the second artist they signed. Wow. And then everybody came after me. I'm talking, yes, even sir. Mongo, Tito Puente, they signed after, after you with that label. Wow. And I, I was with Concord for 30 years, and my contract, my last contract just was up about six months ago. Really? So I did 28 records with them in 30 years. And right now we're working another deal out, either with Concord or the, well, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet. Okay, no, no, but I'm no, working no, a little fast. Yeah, yeah. Don't let the cat die. No, no, no. no. Okay, uh -huh. all right. So you're, you're, so now you're, you're, you got the deal with Conquer Picante. Picante. Yeah. Okay. Um. Now you're a band leader. Mm. Yeah. Did you want to be a band leader at the time? Did you see yourself as a band leader? I mean, not nah, really. Where? I mean, how did you handle? That yeah. move from being a side guy mm -hmm. to now being, you know, a band leader. And before you answer that, it's a big difference. No, I mean, be, before yeah. you answer that, your first two records was arranged by Hal Leonard, uh, or was it the first? The no, first Claire Fisher. Claire Fisher. Claire. My bad. Yeah. Hal Leonard. Where that Hal Leonard's the cap? Yeah. The books. The books. Yeah, the books. Yeah, the Poncho Sanchez book. Uh, Conga Cookbook came later, and, and, the, <laughs> and the DVD. And the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> almost got there, baby. Hey, yeah, hey, man. Yeah, Claire Fisher, I was with Claire Fisher's band, too, the great Claire Fisher, the great genius, you know? Mm -hmm. I worked with the, his, I was the co-leader of that band, too, the uh, Claire Fisher Salsa Picante band. I was I was the co-leader of that band. Then that's a, I got my training, like I said, through watching Cal, Claire Fisher, Tito Puente, Mongo, asking questions, hanging out with him. But no, I didn't, want to become a leader and I didn't know I was going to become a leader. What happened is, is I um, was with Cal Jeter's band all them years and then when Cal, Cal wouldn't work, he, a, a lot of times he would take the whole month of December off. And so then I would work with the cats around town and it was the Bonda Brothers, you know, before anybody even knew who the Bonda Brothers were. It was Ramon and Tony, you know, I grew up with them since we were, we were kids. Right. And so I'd come back home, uh, being on the road with Cal Jeter and I would tell him, where I'd been and what's happening, and, and I would bring some charts that I got from people along the road, and, and we started putting a band together. You see what I'm saying? And I started putting a band together, and we called the band Montuno. That was the name of the band, and it was uh, with the Bonded Brothers, Charlie Otwell, and uh, Bob Redfield, Bobby Redfield, who just passed away a couple of months ago, a guitar player. Anyway, it was just a, a Latin jazz band that we would use whenever I wasn't working with Cal or something. And it was called Montuno, and then they put featuring Poncho Sanchez and Small Airs at the bottom. Wow. You know? And then I found myself dealing with the musicians' union. I was dealing with the club owners. I was buying all the charts and having arrangements done. And after a while, I realized that all this was happening mainly because of me. You know, I was, I was right. paying for everything. I was, I was being the leader without even knowing being I was the leader. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, after six, seven months of that, I, I just said, wait a minute. This band is called the Poncho Sanchez Latin Jazz Band. Is there any problem with it? I don't think there's and, and the boy said, well, you're the one with the name, and you're the one with the contract, and you're the one that does all the stuff. I guess it is your <laughs> band. <laughs> and so that's how the Poncho Sanchez Latin Jazz Band started 35 years ago. Wow. Okay, so. This, you know, all over the place. You, you helped me out to Switzerland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you remember? I remember that. Yeah. Well, we did the, the, the live DVD the, then. Yeah, the Monterey Jazz Fest. Yeah, Mar Mar Montreal Jazz Fest. Yeah. Yeah, babe. Oh, man. So, yeah. just a lot. A lot. We've been, you know, now you're on there, Chris. I, I just feel that I'm blessed, man. 
Um, I've been blessed to be, I traveled all over the world. Not, I got to tell people, hey, Poncho, have you ever been to here? Have you ever been there? I said, uh, not once, not twice, <laughs> many times. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. All over the place, you know. Yeah. So we, we, I know Francisco feels the same. We, we are blessed. But at this point, since we're talking about that, I promised myself, even more, even more than my wife, I promised myself, because my wife tells me, do what you got to do, you know. She says, but I'm getting tired, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And traveling all over the world is not easy. I, it was 35 years ago for me, but not no more. I'm getting right. older now. Not only that, the airlines is a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. It is yeah. a mess. It's crazy. I travel with we travel with nine and ten people all the time, all over the world. We know what it's all about. Yes, sir. It's not easy, and they charge you for everything. 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 Yeah. So it's not easy no more. And so I promised myself I'm I'm slowing down this year. I'm, I'm gonna we're still gonna do our little traveling. We next week we're in. Uh, Nebraska. We're in Nebraska, the University of Nebraska next week. You know what I mean? We right. just we just got home from Seattle last week, you know. So right. I, I mean I guess that's slowing down, but <laughs> I don't see how, but I'm gonna slow it down now, you know, it's rough. Yeah, uh, now you don't know that I know this. But I'm Chris Hart. Okay. <laughs> I just I gotta keep reminding you. Okay? Here's something else that I, I know about you. I know that you have two dates, you have two cities that declare uh, Pancho Sanchez Day. That's right. And I know. And don't you forget. I, I won't forget. <laughs> is, is one of them DC? Uh, that's right. Wa uh, Washington, DC, there. Pancho Sanchez. Now, I there. couldn't figure out Excuse what the me. second one was. Uh, Houston, Texas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Laredo, so. They, <laughs> We're gonna get into that. That's hold on, that. that must be hold on, don't, don't, don't get them started. Don't get them started. Don't get them started on that. Hold on. Secure. Hold on. There you go. Hold on, man. You, you touched my heart. Yeah. So, so, Pancho Sanchez Day. Yeah, that's nice, man. That's real nice. I can't even get a Chris Hart minute. <laughs> you have a Pancho Sanchez Day. Man. Bro, how is that? Man, you got to make a lot of records, man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be, the most important part, you can make all the records you want, but you know what? They got to sell, my man. Yeah, buddy. I tell people. And that ain't going to happen for me, let me tell Conquer Records, I mean, I love them. We've been together for 30 years, all like that, and we all, we were still great friends. Everything's good. But let me tell you, my man, if, Poncho Sanchez, if anybody makes a record and it don't sell, they ain't gonna sign you again. Yeah. Then they're, they're in the business to make money. Yes, sir. I thank God that all 28 of my CDs have all paid themselves back, and we're in the black now, man. This we all yeah. collecting money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're in the red until then. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And the record companies. Well, nowadays it's a lot different, but we're talking about the way I grew up. You know what I mean? You gotta pay all that money back for a city to spend forty thousand dollars to make my record. Well, the first ones that sell, the, f the f money only comes to conquer. You dig what I'm saying? Once they hit that forty thousand dollars or whatever it might be that we spend for it, now we can split it. You dig? Yes, so mine have all paid themselves yeah. back, and I've made royalty money off of all of them. That ain't easy. Wow. Now. You just sitting there looking pretty. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. Now, the majority of your CDs, you, you usually have like a special guest, like Diana Reeves, yeah. uh, Terrence Blanchard, Chick Korea, you know, so on. Uh, Hugh Massacale, I think, yeah. did something with, yeah. with you guys yeah. and stuff. How do you come up with? The idea of using these special guests and the arrangements that you know that comes with that stuff. So, I mean, is it a process between just you or you and Francisco? Or well, I mean, tell um, let us know how that comes about. Then. All right. Um, yeah, that's true. That's I've done. I had. A, I've had many guests on my records, which is an honor, you know, for for, for us. For us. 
Uh, and the other thing you gotta remember, if you can think of anybody you want on your record, and you could ask them, but they don't have to say yes. They can say, no, it's not enough money, and I don't want nothing to do with that record. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I mean, I hate to say it, but I've turned down people that wanted me on their records. I mean, I don't play that kind of music, man. That's not my thing, you know? I mean, thank you for asking me, but that's not my thing, you know? And so I'm not on that record, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the way it all started out was, uh, of course, I just made my own records with my own band. For about, I made about five or six records with no guests, you know what I mean? Right. But I had great arrangers helping me before Francisco, because Francisco is the musical director, musical director of my band now, and he does 85% of all the arrangements in my band. Uh, before I had Francisco, I had Claire Fisher helping me, the great Claire Fisher used to help me arrange stuff, and we wrote songs together, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Levine, I see Mark Levine in the, the hallway a little while ago. Mark Levine helped me with my arrangements, uh, and then later, Charlie Otwell came in the band to play piano, and Charlie was real nervous and scared. He said he didn't know how to arrange. And I told him, see, because I don't know how to read or write music, but I know music, you know what I'm saying? And I've written 35 tunes, I think. I think it's about 35, 36 tunes. But I write it through piano players because when I got an idea, I, I hum it into the tape and I show it to him and they go, oh my, that's a good idea. And then he started playing on the piano. That's what I do with Francisco. We go up to my room and he starts playing the piano there at the house. Sing it again, do it again. And okay, you want the horns to do this and the bass to do that or whatever. And then we start putting it all together like a puzzle. You know what I mean? I did that with Claire Fisher, Mark Levine, and then Charlie Otwell, he was nervous and he told Poncho, I'm not Claire Fisher or Mark Levine. I don't think I can do that. I said, you have to do it, man, because you're the only guy who know how to read music and write music, man. <laughs> he, I told him, you got to do it, man. And he was all like, well, I don't know. He said, I don't know, boss. I don't know if I can do that, you know? I said, you're going to do it, man. So he come to my house and we start going note by note, song by, you know, and he put on, and after that he goes, yeah, yeah, that's a good little tune, man. Right, right, right. You got a catchy bridge to it. Right. And he, hey, what if we put the horns answering this part? There we go. There we go. Now we got to cut another tune, you know? Oh, wow. And that's how I did it. And I, I've got, like, I don't know, about 35 tunes wow. myself. In the last, I don't know, 10 songs that I've written or been involved with, Francisco's helped me do them all. Yeah. So he's, and David Torres, and David too, Torres. who has passed now. Yeah. But Francisco does now, almost all of it now. Now, I'm going to detour to Francisco now. With that in mind, Francisco, he gives you the idea, you take the idea, and you put your touch to it, you arrange everything. <clears throat> well, the thing about arranging, I'm gonna, this, this thing's feeding back, so. Um, yeah, it looks funny. No, 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 I get you. Um, you can hold this down for me, down. Better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the things about arranging is you can't arrange like let's say somebody like Irakere, you can't do that with Poncho because it's kind of like Santana. It's kind of like doing a song for Britney Spears, but Santana plays it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make sense, right? Right, right, right. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> is that a joke? I know who that is. Tony the is the joke. Is the joke. Yeah. Uh, we'll get security on that. He's got a security t-shirt. <laughs> Got now. Um, so, so you have to approach it real carefully, especially after 28 records, because you can't start. I mean, you you want to put your stamp, you know, like yeah, like I'm I'm the arranger, you know, I want everybody to know who I am. But you can't. You got to do it in a way that it complements the artist. That's the whole point. It's not. It's at the end of the day, he's the one that says yes or no. It's not. It's not. Uh, oh yeah, oh, well that's great. Yeah, we do whatever you want. No, it's it's the artist. The artist has to. You have to complement what he's doing. His ideas take everything into account. The fact that you know, like like he says, he, he'll learn. Like like if there's a break or something, he'll learn. It. No questions asked. But sometimes you hear some of these bands, and you hear like all these breaks and, and this and that, and it's like no, no 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 no, that's not what we do. We, we're about groove. We're about having make it happy while a good time, and that's probably that really attributes to the longevity of Pontra's career. Whenever we do a set, it's, it goes from we do live jazz. We do a cha cha, we have a, you know, maybe a Latin jazz number, Timbalso, maybe a slow song, and then you know, a couple of dance numbers, Charanga, maybe a fun tune, and then a salsa tune, man, and people just like, oh, I just went to a jazz right. concert. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and, and the other thing I, I might add is uh, uh, 
uh, another thing that's important that we found out through the years, you gotta make sure you, uh, what key signatures you put the tunes in, like the lineup. I don't even think I need this thing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so check it out. You don't want to make the whole set in, in the D, D minor or something. All the songs are D minor. Wait a minute, why are we all fighting here? <laughs> yeah, why are they? Why are they? Because all, all the tunes are in D minor, man. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? You, you got to pick the right uh, uh, sequence. sequence of, of uh, the key signatures of the tunes that you're playing in a set, right? Because you know, it keeps, it, believe it or not, people, it, it changes their mood. They're just like people sitting here right now, depending what key you're playing. And if you keep playing in, 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 the, in the minor key, it, people are gonna get like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it does happen. It really does. So that's another thing to think about when you're putting in a set together for a show. Anyway, yeah, you, you know, this is, this is really amazing. And, I, and um, when Ruben asked me to, to do this, this conversation with you and all that stuff. And he was saying, Chris, just get some questions or whatever put together. This is one of the main questions I always wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. I see many Latin jazz groups, many. Um, and almost all over the world, not like you. They're pretty close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's so, I, I know it's close. <laughs> So I've seen many Latin jazz mm -hmm. and I and usually by the second or third song, I'm zoning out. Yeah. I'm I'm being honest. I zone out for whatever. Yeah, that's okay, I know us too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the one thing we walked in the place the same thing. <laughs> so so, but with your band, and this is a testament to you and your upbringing in everything, you are the only Latin jazz group that I know that has an R&B bump sign. Yeah, baby. Yeah. And, and when you get into that groove, oh, and then when you guys start doing the James Brown stuff, and then forget the salsa stuff, they're break dancing and they're <laughs> doing whatever, and they're having a good time. That, that's important, man. But, and, and, and you know what? And, and, and we're going to be honest, because we're brothers, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. There's guys that criticize you about that. That's all right. right. No, 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 hold on. No, 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 no. That, It is all right. Mm -hmm. But so, the, 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 <laughs> that's okay. So, the, the, so I hear people criticize you about, <laughs> okay. you know, how, why is he doing that R&B? This is not an R&B, you know, gig or whatever. And, and, and they, they, they keep talking and talking and talking and, and and I, I pull up Pancho Sanchez. I grab him by the forearm. He got a Latin Grammy Award for, for best Latin jazz album. You can't criticize the, the system. And that's a testament to what you do and the mixture of how you make people hear the Latin jazz, but add the Pancho Sanchez you know, flavor to it. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you. The fact that you, know, you do that. And it's, you know, it's a testament to what you, Francisco, I know Joey somewhere in here, yeah, yeah. And, and the whole yeah. band. You know, you, you, you really make people feel good. Not only feel good, but dance. Well, let me tell you about, about that. You know, uh, you know, I found out many years ago, and I found out like from people from Cal Jader and people like that, uh, the most important thing is to keep the crowd happy. You guys like my, I hope, I'm hoping that you like my music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you got to do what you think is going to be good for all of us. Plus, I'm, it's in my blood, you know. I like black soul music. I like black gospel music. I mean, I'm talking about Sam Cooke and the Soulsters and like that, you know what I mean? And Lou Rawls. And I, I grew up with that kind of music as well as salsa, Latin jazz and all that. So I'm just putting up my life, this is part of my life, all this music, you know, James Brown. I love it, it's in my blood, and that's what I'm gonna do. In other words, I'm not fake. I'm doing the real deal. I'm doing what's in my heart, and that's what you guys always hear. That's my life, you know? So there ain't no jive in there, yes, you know sir. what I mean? And, uh, oh, you're not a jive cat. No, <laughs> I, mean, I, I ain't got time for that, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then the other thing, uh, you know, I think that's important, and, and the other thing I've learned 
if you do music just for a bebop sax player, a trumpet player, burning tunes, bebop stuff, or you do a, a, a conga thing for you know an hour straight, a conga drum solo or something like that. I mean, that's all good. But I learned if you do something like that, you're gonna have a, 10 conga drummers in the front row here and nobody else in the house. You ain't gonna have a full house. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. they all wanna get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Poncho, I'm not gonna lie. And then they wanna know where the beer and the food is in the back. Yeah. Oh, hey, I, I know. I, you dig what I'm no, saying? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. man, I don't wanna satisfy that drum. I mean, I do. But you know, I, I, so that's why I do some, you know, I do some Afro Cuban stuff with the bypass. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, we gotta get everybody in here, get, get everybody involved in this. And then the last thing I'm gonna say about that, they can go ahead and criticize me. It's all good, but I, gotta, I don't know if they're gonna be at the bank at the line putting money in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, if I may have a real question. Yes, sir. See, see, one of the things I learned, I learned from Poncho. I mean, I learned a ton, but the, the one thing that really struck me is. We're in the, the entertainment business. This is the service industry. This is not, we're not curing cancer. We're not discovering a cure for polio or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, and I, I learned it from him. You guys work 40 hours a week, you know, come on with your paycheck, whatever it is, 600, 700 dollars a week. And out of that, you have to pay, you know, 40, 40 dollars to watch us play, plus drinks, plus whatever, you know, take your date and stuff. And for us, to just be playing, you know, just be up, not even look at you guys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, no, you know, go, talking, talking amongst ourselves, and everybody's like, well, well I don't want to see this mm -hmm. MF anymore. Get <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. him out of here, you know? I, I, yeah. And that was the thing. What you say? We do that on home or at home. I'm doing our own little jam session. We, we, we're here to perform and play for you, man. We want to do it. I want to do it. 